Don't forget, you get a little uh, postseason baseball tonight. All the action on ESPN Radio starting at 7.30. It should be a good one. Yanks and the Twins. John Chomby. Boo joins us uh, for a couple moments to preview the game. He'll be calling the action tonight with Chris Stingleton. Uh, John, good to talk to you, my friend. How you been? What's happening? Everything is good. Everything is good. All right. So we, we know, listen, I, I, I know everyone's trying to sell this as, you know, the big bad Yankees and the little Twinkies. I mean, look. Uh, Yankees won uh, 91, Twins won 85. The Twins have earned the right to be here. Um, I want to get to the pitching matchups and get your thoughts um, quickly on them because, you know, you look at Santana, New Yankee Stadium has been a house of horrors for him, but he seems as though if you listen to him, a little more swag, a little more confidence um, going into this uh, this one-game playoff tonight. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, it's 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 always interesting to me you know, looking at guys' numbers in ballparks because yep. I still think that, you know, guys' numbers versus players are more important. So, you know, it's not – you know, I, I'm not sure what Girardi will, will do tonight. As, you know, he's got a lot of different options. But, um, you know, my my guess is that a decent amount of those bad numbers are put up on the backs of – you know, Alex Rodriguez, Mark Teixeira, Derek Jeter, and they don't play for him anymore. So I, I don't. I think it's always different when we, we find a number that says this guy doesn't pitch well in the park. Now, I've talked to some guys who say they walk into a park, I don't like the way it smells, I don't like the way it feels, so sometimes there can be truth to it. I, I don't know what category Santana falls into. I do think he is the most crucial component to this game I, you know he's he has to pitch well in order for the twins to win that's the way i would see it playing out yeah i mean i agree we're not talking you know five or six we're talking maybe going deep you know seven plus eight keep them to hopefully you try to keep them scoreless uh, a couple hits here and there you know the yankees have a potent offense um you know I, i'm curious i i've had this debate with people and detractors i like the one game playoff because i think it's great setup for baseball because what it does is there's detractors of it, but tonight's a perfect example. Like I said, the Yanks won six games more than the Twins, which some people might think is significant, but yet they're playing each other tonight. So you got nine innings, 27 outs. The wild card, to me, it makes teams want to go out there and try to win a division, and you get those pennant races. And sometimes, you know, you can look at the Pirates in 2014 and 15, the Mets last year, the Yankees a couple years ago against Keiko. Sometimes you just run up uh, against a hot pitcher. You know, so my, my, my uh, counter to that is, hey, go out and win the division. Um, yeah, I, uh, what do I say? I, I, I do think that, that the extra wild card has for sure accomplished what they'd hoped. I do think that teams try harder and want no part to be, um, in the one game scenario. Here's where it's difficult for me as someone that really loves baseball, um, a one game setting or a one game playoff is, the antithesis of what baseball is about. Right. Baseball is just not about one game. It just isn't. I mean, no matter what you want to say, um, at the baseball playoffs aren't even – there's so many off days. The baseball playoffs are like the NCAA tournament. Uh, so I don't love the one-game playoff, but people like it. People like a one-game winner-go-home type scenario. That's – the world we live in now so i think you're just going to have to get used to it so it's not it's not my you know first choice as it relates to how this would be pulled off i would be much more in favor of you know the one wild card team has to win once and the second wild card has to win twice where they play two out of three or something along those lines but if the popularity shows that people want it this way then i think you got to keep it this way how about the job that Girardi's been able to do this year? Because, again, you know, you look at this team over the last several years, they were an older team, and then all of a sudden you, you saw what Sanchez was able to do last year. You know, uh, Didi steps in uh, for, for Jeter, doesn't miss a beat. And then, obviously, Aaron Judge, who had that great start then cooled off a little bit. But this is a team that go, I think they were 20-5 and five in September, so they really turned it on late in the season. But, you know, to me, I know Cashman's got to get credit as well. You know, Girardi's a solid manager, but just overall, look, I thought they were going to be a playoff team. I didn't think they'd have, um, 
you know, the streaks that they've had and, and, and win 91 games. I'm shocked at the numbers that judges put up. Um, I don't know if I can say they exceeded expectations, but overall, what about the job Girardi's done? Yeah, I think he's done a really good job. I think he's enjoyed it. You know, my, my time being around Joe this year, uh, he's different. He's more loose. I think he's enjoyed this younger team, and there's a way different vibe with this group than any Yankee team I've been around. This, you know, look, I know the Cubs first started doing it, but the whole interviewing guys, the fake interview and the dugout, stuff like that, right, right. that is so not the Yankee vibe of the last 20 years. <laughs> right. And I, for one, <laughs> love it. I love the fun that they have. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's picking Torres up and putting him on somebody's shoulder so he can high-five Judge, whatever. They have a good time, and they have a, a, an energy and a likability that Yankee teams in the past have not had. You know, as you kind of take a look around baseball as we get set for the postseason, you saw Cleveland and Chicago, Epic World Series last year, seven games, and then all of a sudden these are teams that, you know, you couldn't figure them out early on in the season, but then they've come on late in the season. I mean, Cleveland's done an unbelievable job. Uh, they have a great their, – their offense is ridiculous. They're getting the pitching. And then you look at Chicago, and I think Cubs fans were a little – I don't want to say they were a little nervous, maybe a little dicey here and there, but then the Cubs finally put it together. Um, and it's good to see. I mean, it's amazing to think because it's almost – I don't want to say these two teams were afterthoughts, but people were – you, you, you see how Houston had their season, and you see how the Dodgers were running away with it, and Houston was running away with it. And then all of a sudden, hey, you get the two teams that we saw last year in the World Series in an epic seven-gamer, you get them back in the playoffs, which to me is good for baseball. It's great for baseball. Yeah, I, look, there, there are a lot of good teams. I think that's the, the first place that I'd go. I mean, a fully healthy Nationals team, uh, you know, is going to be really difficult to deal with because of the front line starting pitching. Now, obviously, we'll see how Scherzer's hammy is, but right. and they have a, a depth of lineup that is scary, man. They're just they're a number of really good teams, and I think the Cubs, yeah, they they got their act together. They really came around offensively. That was a big thing. I think that you know when their season ends, uh, you know, I think that the tombstone will say. They didn't do a good good enough job of stopping people from scoring. I think that's going to be the issue for the Cubs. How about the Dodgers? Because, you know, you, you saw it was relatively easy for them. Yeah, you know, sometimes you get snake bent with so many injuries and you got to worry about Kershaw and things happen. But this is a team that won 104 games. You know, you go back to 74, they won over 100. To me, I think if not only do they have to get to the World Series, but they have to win it, I'm just wondering, you know, your take from a Dodgers perspective, if it would be a total disaster and disappointment if they not only didn't get to the World Series, but didn't win it. I mean, I don't like throwing around disaster because I, I look. I still would say, I, I, I kept making this point: the Dodgers had a run. I mean, they won sixteen to seventeen at one point. They went fifty-two and nine over a sixty-one games. It's remarkable. Stretch, which, yeah, I mean, it just it hurts your head. But the <laughs> thing that I would point that I was pointing out even during that stretch is if you stop right there and made them play a seven-game series against the Nationals right then and there, they'd barely be a favorite. Barely. So, because the Nationals are good, and because it's a seven-game series. Yep. It, so, you know, look, people don't want to hear it, but um, it's one of those deals where, you know, it, it's funky stuff can happen. You know, it's funny. Like, if you're a Yankee fan, you know, this one, this one's – Interesting, and you may not, you know, think about it this way, but all those years with the Braves, you know, man, thirteen straight, and you could only win one, one World, World Series. Series. Yep. How do the How do the Braves do it? Well, Yankee fans know how you do it, because how do you enjoy two thousand and one to two thousand and eight? Yep. Yeah. You didn't win. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's the thing. No. You're right. I mean, as dominant as you could be, you still walk away with no championships and no World Series. Absolutely, you and, can be dominant regular season, but nothing postseason. Yeah, but it, my point is, it can happen, and it it does not necessarily diagnose a flaw on a team. You know, when you're playing, you know, in such a short sample, it's you know, it's like the the analogy that I use is, if you wanted to beat Michael Jordan in one on one, 
would you play him to one or would you play him to twenty one? You play him to one. Yeah, because you, you, all you got to do is get lucky once. There you go. Yeah, it's a shame my Knicks so. can never do that. <laughs> 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 hey, li- listen, I know I got you for another minute. I want to close out just a quick little wrap around with the NL East. Um, you're seeing the changes with the Mets and Collins, the Phillies and McKinnon. You got the Mets in Atlanta. Um, what's going on there? You got Jeter now with the Marlins. I mean, this those those franchises I just mentioned. You know, new look. You know, certainly personnel you got to watch going forward, but it's interesting because that that's going to be, I think, over the next several years, you got to get the right pieces in place with some of these organizations. And obviously, with the Marlins and Jeter, uh, he's got that winning pedigree. But when you look at the Phillies in our backyard, when you look at the Mets and Collins, uh, and then the Braves, I mean, that's 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 going to be an interesting division, I, I think, to watch going forward a little bit, just to see the inner workings of it. Um. So I, I you know, my thought, I, I'm not. I have a couple of thoughts. Uh, specific to Cheater and the and the and the Marlins, the first thing I would say is he's zero for one. <laughs> that you're going in there and firing all those people, like and doing it the way. Look, the Marlins don't have a lot of history. That's a fair but point. Going in there and firing the most popular player that the franchise has had. That's like never good. Call Mr. Marlin. Yeah. I don't know wh- why is that necessary. It's not necessary. You know, in the little bit of history they have. You probably would like Jeff Conine to be around and not pissed off at the organization so you can have him attached to the organization. The other thing I'm curious is, is he really going to make baseball ops decisions? Because, number one, he's been out of the game for the last couple of years. And if, you were, if you're not in the game and then try and get back in, yep. there is a lot to learn. And then the other point that I would make is, if you're trying to run baseball ops and you have no concept, of analytics or advanced metrics, you have no chance. None. Zero. So uh, I'm interested to see what he does and how the the decision-making process works in uh, South Florida. Yeah, it's going to be interesting going forward. All right, listen, my friend, I know we're tight on time. Uh, We'll definitely tune in tonight. Always a good listen. Always appreciate it. Good insight, and uh, enjoy the postseason. You got it.